Hello, Phoenix. Gully of the Sun. Gully of the Blazing Hot Sun. It's 2 o'clock Sunday, and it's time for Need to Read. Welcome to the show. I'm getting right straight into it, cutting off Gordon Lightfoot. Well, you'll hear the music again, and it's always great to hear Gordon Lightfoot, that's for sure. Uh, this is a show about reading for fun, profit, and understanding, and the development of habitual critical thinking. And I invite you to call into this show. It's a special show because it actually, for the for the time being, it's the last broadcast on coming live from the studios of KFNX 1100 Independent Talk Radio. Uh, I won't go into all the details, but um, it, a situation, the financial situation going on right now, I'm not going to uh, be upping on a, uh, doing the show here, but we're going to be going on li- online, and I'm going to be participating in a show that is going to be uh, on Marketing Madness Network. Marketing Madness Network is going to be featuring my two grandsons, uh, Andrew and Nick. And sometimes I guess I'm going to be on there to talk about reading for fun, profit, and understanding. One of the most important things that you can do in your life is to is to master the skill of reading and to use it continuously. Not just in reading books and reading papers, but to use your understanding of words so that when you hear news broadcasts and you listen to what people say, that you can understand how it is that they're thinking, what the truth of it is, and how to to uh, participate in an exchange of ideas with that person on a level that makes it possible to come to some kind of realization of the truth. And that is what this show is all about, is reading for fun, profit, and understanding. And all three of those things are extremely important. Understanding is extremely important. And having fun is absolutely essential to the human psychic. And... And profit is another thing. It's essential to everybody. So I have uh, Justin, uh, my uh, grandson-in-law, mm-hmm. married to my granddaughter and the father of my my newest great-grandchild. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Nicholas, my grandson. Yes. And uh, my uh, son, uh, Eli, the youngest of uh, the children from his mom, Alice, and, and, uh, and I. And his, he has... Uh, brothers and sisters as well. And so you got these guys are going to be coming on the show on their on the in, internet and they're going to be uh uh discussing the things that young people talk about nowadays. And sometimes or another I'm going to be able to get in an edge about books and reading and reading old stuff and not just reading all this new frivolous glitter and rouge stuff, all this stuff this stuff that attracts the attention, the big uh the big uh, uh, special effects of movies instead of the incredible depth depth of storyline, oh, okay. all that kind of stuff. Okay, now I, now I, <laughs> so now, we're it, gonna we're gonna be we're gonna we're, I'm gonna let you go ahead, Nick, and do some do some stuff on here, and, and you got a few minutes until we come to the first break. Oh, right. wait a second, well, I got to give out the phone number to everybody. If you want to call in and talk about uh, possibly helping the show go on instead of coming to an end today, you can call in about that as well, or you want to stay in touch with me. About reading for fun, profit, and understanding, then you can, of course, uh, contact me at need to read kfnx 1100 at Gmail. And you can call into the show today to talk to the boys and talk to me at 602-277-5369 or 1-866-536-1100. Uh, okay, there's a... Uh, okay, there is a call on yeah, the Yeah, there's a board. caller right there. So uh, we're going to take uh, Moses... Moses, are you on the line? I uh, yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this is uh, the number one son, uh, Eli's yes. brother, and the uncle of uh, of uh, Andrew and uncle-in-law of sorts. What other Moses uh, do Justin. you know? <laughs> so Moses, what's going on? Well, I just uh, thought I'd uh, call and uh, say hi. Actually, I'm uh, coming back down from North Scottsdale. So I'm doing uh, cars. So you got my text, right? I did get your text. About <laughs> Eric, that old friend of mine coming to town after 30 years yes. or something? Yes, and I just yes. want to say yes, that, um, uh, you know, when I read, uh, I always look at uh, words that I uh, don't understand. So, and then that kind of helps me make, uh, give a, a better understanding okay. of what I'm doing. So you just reading. got, you just come down from Scottsdale doing some cars up there, right? 
Yeah, that is correct. Okay, well. Up on Lizen Trail and Pima Road. All right, so Moses, it's my partner, it's sort of, he's actually the head of the mobile car wash, and I help him out sometimes, and uh, we always, do, whatever mm-hmm. we do in the cars, we do it like we were, like, you know, we, mm-hmm. we'd expect to get done if we were paying for it. So, anyway, uh, Mo, uh, thanks for the call, and... Uh, oh. Uh, okay, I also wanted to say one okay, thing to ahead. answer uh, Andrew's question about uh, who built the borders uh, along Mexico and the uh, United States. Well, the railroads were, were built uh, to form the, uh, the borders, uh, something like that. Well, he will have a chance when he gets him and, and, and Nick get on, get on the internet. You can discuss that okay. even further. I'm going to let Nick do a little bit before we go to the break and let the, let the, the youngsters over here. Uh, we have 18 years old. Uh, yes. 18 to 35? Something close way, enough. Uh, way to take it. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> way to take it. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Nick. Sorry Please, about that. Thank you for taking my call. All right, thank yeah. you, Moses. Okay. All mm-hmm. right, dude. Wash right. those cars. Mm-hmm. We'll wash them up. Okay. So the first thing, uh, we wanted to discuss was, uh, the, the Alex Jones controversy that was going on with the, the Alex uh, Jones, yes. Uh, for the viewers that don't know out there, uh, Alex Jones. Listeners. Jo- oh, listeners. viewers. Excuse v- me. Viewers. Yes, right. Uh, We're on- we are streaming live. Those that don't know, uh, Alex Jones was, Alex Jones was recently dropped off of YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and a lot of other tech things that he shows his episodes and live streams on. And a hey, lot of them. Didn't he say like the world was flat or something? No. no I don't no, think no, he was probably. that dumb. <laughs> are you sure? No. Have you seen Alex Jones? I don't think he's that dumb. Uh, um, <laughs> they all just, they all dropped him and a lot of them used the same reason, which was, Bullying and harassment, which is against their terms and service on all all of the uh, tech companies. Yeah. YouTube did something where they suspended him for 90 days, quoting that reason. And Alex Jones tried to circumvent this by live streaming on another channel of one of his episodes. And when YouTube caught wind of this, they just straight up deleted all his videos and channel. So, what? well, he comes here on this station. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he he's a big uh, big time on this station. I think I've and, heard uh, him a couple of times. Yeah, he he kind of talks like this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, ranting, yeah. Like, <laughs> ranting and raving. He always sells yeah. you something every five minutes. Yeah, and uh, he he has some points. Like you know, I first I was telling you guys earlier that I first heard about him from the Bohemian Grove, where he did that inside, um, you know, uh, undercover like a, undercover like a sting operation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was. Uh, yeah, that's where I first heard about him, yeah. and uh, he he always. Uh, I think the biggest thing was that Sandy Hook uh, uh, conspiracy that it was all the crisis actors that the children was, didn't really die, and you know when yeah, you think, that, you think that, about it, think it, it's a big thing. Though. Think I mean, about how questions. much money how much money these people that are supposed to go to this Grove place or the Bilderbergers or the Rothschilds how much money these international bankers and money people have. They could very well be uh, financing Alex Jones to to put out these well, most outlandish ideas but, yeah. to make okay. people believe to, to make people believe that whatever he says it, and is is crazy. I think you just out conspiracy theoried Alex Jones. But I didn't know it was possible. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I you just think so. gave a conspiracy theory with Alex Jones. And well, I, that that brings up the subject of reading for research, and that's uh, called The Unseen Hand by Ralph Epperson. And yeah. If you've ever read The Unseen Hand. You can you will realize that the United States and this idea of limited government and individual freedom, uh, uh, freedom from government tyranny, has been under assault as, so, as soon as it was conceived. The United States was conceived with limited government, individual liberty, and the monarchs of Europe, who were at the time taking over the world, did not like that, and so they've been conspiring against us, the United States, ever since our inception. And it was more between uh, I think it, I think it was John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, where they're like, yeah, the. Con- John Adams was like, the Constitution, you could kind of like work with that a little bit. Well, Thomas Jefferson was like, no, what's in there is in there and you can't work around it. And that, that was the big argument between it, whether you can work around the Constitution or whether you couldn't. Well, irregardless, yeah. the con- I mean, or regardless, the Constitution is the, is the supreme law of the land. Yeah. But- and so that's how we have to base all of our other laws on its concepts and, and its wording. Back to the subject at hand. What do you guys think of the uh, Alex Jones of him getting taken off by every single tech uh, business? Good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> really? I, I, if it was up to me, uh, he would have never had a single listener because it, I would have. I've never. I've listened to him for a few minutes, and as soon as he ran, started running his mouth and said things, I said to, my, I said to myself, "There is really, there is really no, uh, there is really no." Uh, uh, 
no reason to listen to him, except maybe if I might gleam a fact or two, because his conclusions are so crazed, just completely crazed. In, in the, even in the Book of Lies, there's some truth that can be formed. Well, a, a broken clock is you well, know, correct. The, it has the right time twice. That, twice. that whole Sandy Hook thing, it, it's, a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. I see where he's trying to trying to get out. I mean, he goes to the extreme. I mean, the guy got in. The, you had to get buzzed in. The shooter had to get buzzed in the place, and... It, it, somehow they just buzzed him in, and well, it, it, it was a lot of stuff that it wasn't it, adding up. I don't know all the facts, but here, here's know. a here's a clip that I saw on the TV one time, and they never played it again ever. But I did see it once, and it was these guys at the at the at the uh, Twin Towers, uh, at, you know, not the Twin Towers anymore, just Ground Zero, and they they were protesting maybe the the raising of the Freedom Tower that they were building, right? Instead of building the two towers. Instead of building the two towers back like they should have, you know, they built this silly other thing that took years on end. Anyway, these guys are out there protesting, saying that, um, the, talking about the 9-11 conspiracy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this uh-huh. one, and so this reporter says, asks this one guy something, and he goes, the same people that shot Kennedy brought these towers down. Well, <laughs> I to myself, okay, kid. Now, who are those? Those same people that killed well, Kennedy. That was how many years ago was it that they killed Kennedy, yeah. for God's sakes? But conspiracies are intergener- uh, intergenerational. Of course, they're going to want to pass it down to their protege. Uh, men, just even though, you know, it takes a while. But anyway, uh, guys, uh, we're going to a break. When yeah. we come back, I'm going right. to let these uh, youngsters try to pretend that they know something about life. Oh, we'll be no, right thanks. back. Okay. Yeah. What does hope mean to you? Is it taking that extra step or just standing up? Is it running that extra mile or just walking down the stairs? Everyone defines hope differently, but at Surgenix, we want you to ask for more. We're giving hope back to patients by pioneering the next generation of medicine. Leveraging unprecedented quality, safety, and value, our products represent our vision that treatment can be different, that it can rekindle hope. Every member of our staff is dedicated to the vision that hope can be more than a dream for tomorrow, but with passion and commitment can be something we can pioneer today. Welcome to Surgenics, where hope isn't a concept, it's a reality. <laughs> 